Today on Sugar Spun Run, we will be making a beautiful 40 plus layer crepe cake. Hey Sugar Spun Bakers, Sam here, and today I am so excited to be sharing another carefully tested, well-researched, and perfected recipe. This cake is a showstopper. You're going to have at least 40 layers. It is super unique looking, and it's not too sweet. This would make a great brunch dessert, or you can serve it for regular dessert, whichever you choose. Let's jump right in. Now, of course, for crepe cake, you need crepes. So we're we're going to be making my super easy blender crepes. So I'm gonna grab my blender. If you don't have a blender, don't worry. I will include notes in the description so you can make these crepes without one. The first ingredient we need today is two cups of whole milk. We'll just add this right on in. We'll also be adding a half cup of water. The next thing that we need is our eggs. So for today's recipe, we're going to be using four large eggs. And I'm just going to crack these into my measuring cup. I have my pretty green eggs for my chickens today. Let's add these into our blender. And then for some flavoring, we'll be using one and a half teaspoons of vanilla extract. Now the next thing we're going to need is four tablespoons of melted unsalted butter. Drop that right in, make sure I scrape all the butter out of my dish. You guys know I don't like to waste butter around here. And now let's add our dry ingredients. We'll be starting with two cups of all purpose flour. And I really love this crepe recipe because everything goes in the blender. There's no extra mixing bowls or anything like that. We'll also be adding two tablespoons of granulated sugar and a half teaspoon of salt. This is just table salt. Now let's pop the lid on here. If I can figure out which way it goes. And we're going to blend everything up until it's completely combined. I'll do this for about 10 seconds. Then I'm just going to check the batter and make sure everything is well combined. I can already see I have some flour sitting here on the side, so I'm just going to knock that in. Be careful with your spatula and the blades of your blender because the blades are super sharp. They will cut your fingers if you touch them and they will cut up your spatula. And I'm just going to blend for a couple more seconds. Okay, so I have everything blended up. I'll take another peek real quickly just to make sure there are no lumps or anything. It looks great. Now with crepe batter, what you wanna do is you wanna let this rest for a little bit before you start turning it into crepes, cooking it. So what I do is I pop it in the refrigerator, I leave the lid on, and I'm going to let it rest for at least 30 minutes. This will help the batter develop, and it is also going to help keep the crepes from tearing while you're cooking them. You can make this batter up to a day, I'd say probably even two days in advance. Just keep it in the fridge. I'll see you guys in 30 minutes. All right, so my crepe batter has been in the fridge for over 30 minutes now. So we're just about ready to start making our crepes. To do this, you are going to need a skillet. Now, we are going to be aiming for eight inch round crepes today because it's going to make an eight inch cake, which is pretty much the perfect size for a cake, especially a layer cake. My skillet is technically considered a 10 inch skillet, but the bottom is almost exactly eight inches across, so I love using this. I get them nice and round every time. I will see if I can find a link to this skillet. I'm also using a non-stick skillet. Don't often use nonstick in my day-to-day -day life, but when you're making crepes, it really does make it so much easier to remove the crepes from the pan and to flip them without tearing them. So my stove top is on medium heat. I have my skillet. I'm going to brush this with a little bit of oil. Now you could use melted butter instead. Today I'm using avocado oil. A canola oil or vegetable oil would work. I want to make sure I get a nice thin layer on the pan. And it's important that this be nice and hot before I add my crepe batter. Now, as for my crepe batter, I do want to give this another quick stir before I begin using it, just in case it's separated any. Okay, so I can feel the heat radiating off of my pan. It's time to start cooking some crepes. You're going to need about one fourth cup of batter per crepe. I like to use an ice cream scoop for this, just makes the job a lot easier. I'm going to go ahead, pour my batter in. Then I'm going to take my crepe pan off the heat, pour it in, and I'm going to swirl the pan so that we have a nice even layer of crepe batter. And we're going to cook this crepe for about 45 seconds. How long it takes can really vary depending on your stovetop. But what I look for is the crepe's going to begin to look dry and the edges will have set. So I'm gonna give this a couple more seconds. Let's take a peek under here. Flip that crepe and we will continue to cook it until it is cooked through. I wanna see some light goldenness on both sides. Now, while making a crepe cake is really pretty easy, none of the steps are super complicated, it does take time. I find that it takes me about an hour to cook all of the crepes needed to make this crepe cake. We're going to be making about 20 to 23 layers of crepes. 
All right, let's take a look. That looks great. I'm going to remove it to a cooling rack, and then I will immediately brush this with a little bit more oil. And we'll go ahead and cook the next one. I want to get all the way to the edge there. Now you can see here I have a couple of cooling racks set out. This is where my crepes are going to cool. I do not want to stack the crepes on top of each other while they're warm, but they cool really fast. So I'll just start cooling them on the rack and then once they've cooled completely, I can start stacking them and that'll make room for me to place the rest of my crepes. All right, let's take a peek at this one. Looking beautiful. I'm going to go ahead and flip this. And the second side usually cooks pretty quickly. Just so you can see how that looks. You may get more than 20 crepes, but I usually just layer 20 of them. It's just nice to have a few extras in case some of them tear. All right, I think I have enough for one more crepe. Oops, and I tore our last one. I can't believe I did that. It's okay, don't panic. So we've cooked all our crepes, we're done with our stovetop, but we do need to make sure our crepes cool completely before we start layering our cake. Fortunately, they cool really, really fast because they're super thin. So let's go ahead and make our frosting or crepe cake filling. So for the filling for today's recipe, I use a whipped cream cheese frosting. Again, this is not too sweet. It makes a nice, fluffy, silky layer. So let's go ahead and make it. You're going to need a mixing bowl. And to this, we are going to add one and two third cups of cold heavy cream. We'll also add 3 fourths cup of powdered sugar, and you could use a stand mixer for this part, but I'm just going to be using my handheld electric mixer. And we're going to beat this to stiff peaks. I wouldn't really recommend doing this by hand because it would be quite an arm workout, but it is doable. Now, stiff peaks, what this means is your cream has increased in volume, it should be thick and fluffy, it should have a Cool Whip-like consistency. You can see that if I put my spatula in it and I lift it up, any peak that forms holds its shape and doesn't fall back in on itself. It's nice and sturdy. We'll set this aside. Now we're going to grab a separate bowl and to this we are going to add eight ounces of softened cream cheese. I'm also going to add a half cup of powdered sugar and I'm going to stir these together until they're nice and smooth and we don't have any lumps. All right, now for a little bit of flavor, I like to add a half teaspoon of vanilla extract and also just a pinch of salt. This is like an eighth teaspoon, just a little sprinkle. I'm gonna stir these in as well. Okay, grab your whipped cream and we'll add this right into the bowl with our cream cheese mixture. And you do not want to use your electric mixer for this next step because you run the risk of deflating your cream. Make sure you get all of it. But using your spatula, you're just going to gently fold these two ingredients together until they are nicely combined. It should be a nice uniform mixture. Okay, this looks great. Our crepes are cooled. Let's go ahead and assemble our crepe cake. You'll want to grab yourself a serving platter and we will start with our first crepe. Okay, now for our filling, I like to use a, a cookie scoop to scoop this. This is a one and a half tablespoon cookie scoop and I do two slightly rounded scoops. So I guess we're a little bit close to three tablespoons of filling between each layer. Then grab yourself an offset spatula and we are just going to spread this in an even layer. So I want a nice layer. You don't wanna make this layer too thick or the cake is just going to slide around and you won't have enough filling to do all of your layers. So I do wanna go all the way to the edges, make the layers even as possible. And we'll add our next layer. Okay, I have an assistant who has joined me. Do you know what we're making, Luke? Quick cake. That's right. So right now we're just adding our filling between our layers. Can you get me a scoop? Yeah. Perfect. Go ahead and drop it on there. Great. And will you go ahead and smooth this for me? Good job. Perfect. And I'll finish it. Mm -hmm. Thanks. So when I'm spreading this, I can almost see the crepe through the filling. It's a pretty thin layer. You want to get me another one ready? Now you should have about 20 crepes. So this turns out to be a 40 layer cake, which is pretty cool, but it does take a little bit of time to do all of the layers. Right, Luke? Mm-hmm. 
Now, when you're placing your crepes, take care that you line them up nicely. That way your crepe cake is stacked nice and straight and you don't end up with like leaning tower of crepes. All right, I was a little over ambitious with my filling, so I'm going to go a little bit light for my last two layers. Okay, last little bit of icing. I'm scraping the bowl for this. We'll spread our last bit of filling and our last crepe. Okay, so our cake is assembled, but I like to add a chocolate ganache topping to mine. I need to replenish my chocolate supply, so I'm going to do that. But while I prepare my ganache, I like to have the cake sitting in the fridge. That way it just gets nice and cold or stays nice and cold. And when we add the ganache, it's just going to help it to firm up faster and make it less likely to just drip off the cake. Now for our ganache topping, this is super simple. You're going to need six tablespoons of heavy cream and we want to heat this until it's simmering. So I'm just going to pour it in a small saucepan over medium heat. Keep an eye on it. You don't want to bring it to a boil. You just want it to be hot and steaming. I think I said simmering, but I really just watch for it to be steaming. Meanwhile, I have three ounces of chocolate measured out in a heat proof bowl. I am using, um, Coverture chocolate today, probably saying that wrong, but you could use a chopped chocolate bar instead. And you may have noticed that my assistant disappeared. It's really strange, but when the snacking chocolate disappears, so does he. Okay, my cream is steaming. I'm going to remove it from the heat and I'm going to evenly pour it over my chocolate in my bowl. Now I'll immediately cover this with some foil because I wanna trap that heat in there. And I'm just going to let this sit for five minutes. After five minutes, We'll uncover our chocolate and just use a whisk to whisk until it's nice and smooth. Now you can pour this over your crepe cake now, but it's still a little bit thin. So I like mine to cool a little bit and thicken just a bit so I can sort of spread it over my crepe cake rather than having a thin layer. I like a little bit of thick fudgy ganache. Okay, this is thickened just a little bit. Let me grab my little spatula. And I pulled my crepe, crepe cake out of the fridge as you can see. Now we'll just add our chocolate layer on top. Now I like just to do an even layer on top. It looks kind of messy if you drip it down the sides. So I'm going to try to avoid doing that. And then if you'd like, you can grab yourself some berries and place these on top of the cake just for some added decoration. Now I am going to pop this back in the fridge to let the ganache firm up a bit before I slice into it. All right, let's go ahead and dig in. My chocolate's still a little bit soft, but you guys know I'm not really patient when it comes to dessert. Oh yeah, look at all of those layers. I really hope you guys enjoyed today's recipe and if you try this one out, please leave me a comment and let me know what you think. I always love hearing from you. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Hey, good to see you back. You ready? Yeah. Chocolate or no chocolate? Chocolate. How did I know you were gonna say that? Go ahead, cheers. What do you think? Good. It's really good. Do you want more? Mm -hmm. Me too. I'm ready to film. You want to film? Yeah. Okay. Um, can I have a piece of chocolate? <laughs> we need that for the topping. One piece. Okay, one piece. Go, Colt Go on, buddy. Why do you like filming with me, kiddo? Um, because I like the food. Like when I'm, when I'm cooking them. <laughs> no. You want to be here mm -hmm. for emotional support? Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. Do you, what do you like more, the chocolate or mommy? I like the chocolate. You cut me deep, Luke. You cut me real deep. For myself. Yeah, for your, for you mean for yourself. Ooh. Need some? No, thank you for offering. I'm good. <laughs> Thanks, Nick. I'm so excited. <laughs> I'll put the crepe on top. Okay. You could just use 19 Mom, layers. Mom, the glass is turning mm -hmm. white. Okay, Luke. Will you stop eating for just a second so I can talk to the camera? I like the chocolate to eat. <laughs> yeah, I'm ready for you to eat. <laughs> Do you need assistance? Do you want me to take this over to your little table? Mm-hmm. Okay.